Not unusual to go driving with a little Tam. Hi, Tam. Where are we going today, Tam? Today, Slatsy, we're going to meet Dr. Chrysanta Mooley. And who is Chrysanta Mooley? She's the CEO of One Girl. Yep. Um, and she is going to help us understand the link between educating girls and why it's one of the biggest tools we have to combat the climate emergency that we're already in. Last season, the episode with Jane Caro around educating girls was probably the most illuminating for me because I just had not made the connection between educating girls and how that can help tackle climate change. Well, as they say... What does it say, Tam? Educate a boy yeah. and you educate an individual. Mm. Educate a girl and you educate a nation. Well, that's cause for celebration. Let's get there. Don't spare the herbs, Tam. Let's put a foot on it. I think she, she would definitely be taller Am than I you, I think. Yeah. Short sure. people. Which uh, no business. Merci Water. beaucoup. Yeah. Merci okay, beaucoup. Okay. Without some disclaimer. Look at all these amazing people around me. Hi, people! Hello! And speaking of which, <laughs> who are you and why am I interviewing you? I am Chrysanta Muli. I'm the CEO at One Girl. One Girl is a feminist organization that works to support young girls and young women to have access to a quality education. We walk and work with girls to break down those barriers that they face, especially in developing countries. You're interviewing me today because I'm a human being who is very, very concerned about the extreme weather that we're all experiencing and the changes in the climate. I am here to say that yes, we're concerned, but guess what, there is a solution girls' education. And that's why you're here talking to me today. Where are we? What are we doing here? And why are we doing it? We are in the Abbotsford Convent. It's a beautiful space in Melbourne. We're here to talk about solution to climate change, which is girls' education. Why are we doing this? Because it is important that we talk about not just one way of addressing climate change, but also talk about all ways of addressing climate change and the fact that we all have to be part of the solution. And that's great, but why on earth are you wanting to save the planet? Because I am human, because you are human, because planet Earth is home. There is no planet C or planet B, this is it. For the time being, we are stuck here all of us together. And we're stuck here very closely because I can actually hear tomorrow's stomach, which is just amazing. Oh, come on. <laughs> I think in Australia we take education for granted. Obviously in a lot of developing worlds, uh, girls have to leave school early if they get an education at all. They are married early. What's the difference between an educated girl and an uneducated girl? An educated girl can make decisions and choices in her life not just in her life, but in the life of her family and the community. But I also think that when we think about girls' education, it is a human right. It is a right that girls are denied because of where they live. And that is having an impact in the solutions that we are talking about when we talk about climate change. They say that educating a male, you educate an individual but you educate a female and you educate a nation. Can you explain that for me? My favorite topic. When you educate a girl, you educate a community. And when you educate a woman, her children get educated, which is slightly different when it comes to educating a man. Yes, men take care of the family, but women will make sure their children and daughters are educated especially. An educated woman will not allow for her child to be married at a young age and an uneducated woman will ensure that that child has every opportunity that her brother does. How is educating girls such a big part of tackling the climate crisis that we're in? I'll start with the fact that some clever, very clever scientists have come together at some point and have been working over the last couple of years to say what are the different ways that we can address climate change and the climate crisis we find ourselves in. And for many of them, uh, they have come up with a hundred solutions, clever scientists. And guess what? Girls' education is sixth out of a hundred. Wow. That is the power of educating a girl. 
We can talk about solar panels, we can talk about electric cars, we can talk about recycling. But if you are excluding millions of girls from that conversation, then they're not equipped to be able to make those solutions happen. Yeah. So we have a responsibility to make sure that everybody is part of the solution and not just some people. We're literally tackling things with half the population. That's exactly right. So when you think about education, it literally is about the skills and knowledge that somebody then takes from that education. So if a girl is educated, it means she can make decisions and she can make choices for herself and her family that actually will help cope with climate change or respond to climate change. If she's not educated, she doesn't have that. When you educate a girl, you also are creating a space where girls can be the future innovators, the future scientists, the future leaders, the future mothers that will ensure that climate change is at the forefront of their lives. And guess what? When you educate a girl, you are creating a climate action that is inevitably going to change lives. Look at Vanessa Bakate in Uganda. Look at Greta Thunberg in Germany. Look at what they are doing as young women because they are educated. So the education of a girl means that 132 million more people will be part of this climate solution. Australia, we've got a front row to all the extremes of weather that you know, we're going through at the moment, bushfires, floods, droughts. What do you say to people who don't seem to understand that right now we're in a climate crisis? I ask them a question, what will it take? Will it take more bushfires all over Australia? Will it take longer droughts? Will it take more snow? Will it take more floods? What will it take? Climate change is real. It is happening. It is affecting each and every one of us. And we all have a responsibility to say it stops with us. People are dying. People are losing their homes, their livelihoods. And we are still sitting and asking, is it real? It is real and it is here for the long haul. So we do need to make a difference and to take action now. Can you explain how climate change is already impacting women and girls in developing countries? This is the unfair bit. This is where injustice comes in. Women and girls in developing countries are least responsible for the crisis we are finding ourselves in, but are bearing the brunt of climate change. They are the most exposed to climate change and the climate crisis. Why? Because women and girls are largely in developing countries dependent on natural resources, collecting firewood, growing food for their families, gathering fuel to cook for their families. When we talk about droughts, floods, climate change, that has a direct impact on their lives. Girls are being kicked out of school so that they can go fetch water because it's much further than it used to be and the mothers can't do it by themselves. So this is having an impact at a micro level, at a small level, individual, but it's also having um, an impact at a community and a global level. So yes, it's affecting girls in developing countries. Many of them may never have access to education because of climate change. So what's the one thing that someone like me or the people watching this can do right now? Join us and donate. Education is the gift that keeps on giving. So go to our website, www.onegirl.org.au and make a donation. $10, $20, $30. Donate your coffees for the next month and make a real difference in somebody's life that you have never met. Now that is the power of change. That's something a bloke from Abbotsford can do, <laughs> I reckon. Good. Chrysanta, your last challenge. In 60 seconds or less, Explain to me the climate crisis and what we can be doing right now to make a difference. Your time starts now. Climate change is real, people. It is happening to you, whether you realize it or not. It is hitting your back pocket today. Prices in terms of food in the supermarkets, fuel, are being hit by the fact that we have been in drought for very many years. So yes, it's hitting us, but also think about it as a society. All the money that is supposed to be going to healthcare and education and building us up as a society is now going to climate disasters, 
even today in Australia. And yet we still question whether it exists. It does exist, but together we can make a difference. I mean, I'm going to say that's 40 seconds and that was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, I've got stuff to do. <laughs> okay, okay. I think we need to <laughs> Is this part of it? Girls? Who runs the world? Uh, girls. Who runs the world? 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 Uh, girls. Who 